So you're thinking about picking up a wrench for the very first time and doing some mods to your bike, or maybe you want to do your own maintenance and be the rugged, independent biker that the Harley ads told you you were. You've been riding for a couple of months or maybe a couple of years, and you're sure you're not going to wad up your bike doing some street Rossi stuff because you take it easy and you've got nothing to prove. Well, that wrench in your hand can do as much damage to your bike as a crash, except if you snap something off and the bike insurance isn't there to help you out. That's correct. There's more than one way to ruin your motorcycle without crashing it, and we're going to go over some of the easiest and most common ways people bork their bikes on the day to day. Some of these ways might happen while you're out riding, some of these might happen in the garage, and some of them might happen without you even touching your bike. And yep, you heard me right, your bike can get trashed even when you're not looking. And you thought I was joking when I said that the bikes were giant money pits that will drain your wallet of every penny faster than a divorce and a lifetime of alimony and child support. But yams, I don't have kids or a wife. Bike is my waifu. Well, you might not have to send it to college or pay for its lawyer, but your bike will leave you penniless all the same. But hey, that's why you're watching the video, right? I know a lot of you out there watch our videos every day and are not subscribed to the channel, so do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button, and let's check out the seven ways you can completely bork up your motorcycle without crashing it. Now, one of the easiest ways to completely break your motorcycle is to not maintain your chain. This is a super common maintenance item and it only takes a few minutes every couple of weeks, but I still see people saying that they only lose their chain once or twice a year, which is bananas. If you don't lube your chain, you're allowing grit and rust to build up on your chain and in your rollers, which ages it prematurely and stretches as it ages. Chain tension is one of those things you should be checking every time you bust out the lube just to be safe because a chain outside of spec can bunch up and snap in spectacular fashion on the road. There's two ways it can go down. The first and more lucky is that it snaps and shoots the chain out the back of the bike at Mach 1 into the radiator of the car behind you, or it'll snap and shoot the chain at Mach 1 into the engine case. And if that happens, you'll bust a nice solid engine killing hole in the bottom of your transmission, likely ganking up all the gear dogs and probably messing with the top end too, seeing as they're all connected. Some early symptoms of a chain about to fail are driveline lash, which is when parts of your chain are at different tensions, causing the chain to move faster and slower as it spins, or a chain with lots of side to side play. You can also see if the chains are bunching up or chunky and clunky in certain parts of it too. If you notice any of that, just pay the money for a fresh chain and save yourself the headache. Number two, using the wrong oil weight. Let me set the scene for you. You're out on a ride on the trails one day and you decide to hit a jump on your bike. Everything's going well, you even look pretty cool when the trail side babes are preparing to give you their phone numbers and then you hit the ground and bottom out your suspension, slam your engine case on the ground, you spill oil everywhere, the crowd laughs at you and you have to JB weld the soda can to your engine to fill it with whatever oil you have. Well, if you're in that situation and pick up a weight too high or too low, you can cause lasting damage to your engine internals. Now, let me caveat this by saying using 10W40 instead of 10W30 probably won't grenade your engine, but using something crazy different like 20W50 from a Harley or 5W40 from your buddy's diesel truck will not properly lubricate your engine, allowing metal parts to rub directly, sapping power and fuel economy in the short term, and wearing out gears and pistons in the long term. I made a huge tiny mistake. There's a reason your manual tells you which weight to use, and if you're at all confused, just call up a dealership service department and they'll tell you exactly what to put in your bike. Don't think that you need to spring for that fancy Motul 300V in your Grom to keep it healthy. Special oils like that aren't gonna do anything for you that the basic Yama Lube can't. But we all love the forbidden salad dressing smells of Motul 300V. They didn't sponsor this video, but they should. Number three, torque. Torque is awesome, right? It makes your bike do all sorts of dank nooners and it's the reason why you totally smoked that Corvette off the line. And although it brings some sadness deep in my soul, too much of a good thing can be bad, specifically when it comes to torquing down bolts. Just like oil weights, your manual should include torque specs for most of the bolts you'll be pulling out on your bike, so make sure you can get them back to the proper value. If you're not using enough torque on bolts, they'll work themselves loose, sometimes falling completely off the bike. And if you decided not to torque down your front axle nut, then you better be pretty good at floating wheelies. More commonly, though people over torque a bolt leading to sheared and stripped bolts or cracked and stripped out threads. 
I've come to talk with you. I most commonly see this with oil drain plugs where someone uses a wrench to seat the bolts, instantly cross-threading and then torquing it just a bit too far and ripping the treads out completely. If you're stuck running off to your local hardware store looking for a tap and die and a new bolt to fit in the hole, you got lucky and you didn't crack the oil pan. Remember, my little squidlet GNT isn't always right. Take that extra second and check the torque values in the manual. But you know what won't break down on you? The Lawnmower 3.0 from Manscaped. That's right, you can run this little puppy at redline until the battery dies all day every day and not worry about it blowing up on you. And I have a smooth, hairless body to rival the Greek gods. Well, maybe not the Greek gods exactly, but when was the last time you worked out? But hey, at least you'll be smooth and 8 in 10 partners do prefer a trimmed downstairs. And with the performance package, you'll get the Lawnmower 3.0, the Weed Whacker, and the Shears 2.0, the Ball Wipes, the Ball Deodorants, and everything else you need to get your junk in tip-top shape. If you pick up the perfect package, you'll also get Manscaped's anti-chafing boxers and the Shed travel bag for free. Christmas is right around the corner, my dudes, and if you've been looking to get yourself a gift or someone else in dire need of some good grooming, the perfect package is the way to go. Click that link down below and use the code YAMI for 20% off your order. Do it. Your balls will thank you. Number four, tunes. Every motorcyclist on the face of the planet purchase an exhaust for their motorcycle at some point unless they ride a Versa 650. It's only natural. You want your bike to sound better, make a little more power, and chances are your new aftermarket can looks a hell of a lot cleaner than the stock pipes your bike came with. Most of the time, people pop a slip on on their bike and call it a day, but some folks go that extra step and get the tune and the full system for maximum power. If you're using a bass tune from a manufacturer, that's no biggie. The problem comes when people start modifying the tunes without understanding what they're doing. They think they want to add a few ponies to one spot in the rev range, changing the air to fuel ratio, and the bike starts running like trash, knocking and pinging, or just running dangerously hot. This is one of those things that won't blow up your bike instantly unless you go completely hog wild, but it could do some real long-term damage to your bike. If you're not a professional or you're not willing to nuke your engine, it is best not to edit the air to fuel ratio tables yourself. Just take it to a dyno or get an ECU reflash. They're going to do a way better job than you, and if they blow up their bike, you have an out. Number five, parking outside. Another thing that won't cause your motorcycle to instantly burst into flames if you put the kickstand down while in sunlight, but parking outside in elements can have its own problems, specifically to fully fared motorcycles. You see, it doesn't take that much force to push over a motorcycle, and if you don't believe me, go try this out. Stand on the left-hand side of your bike with it on a flat surface and press with your thigh until it's upright. You'll notice that it gets lighter and lighter as you move closer to the upright. Wind can blow down a motorcycle, no problem, especially if you use a cover for your bike. If you park your bike outside, make sure that it's tucked away as much as possible and keep it away from getting knocked over. It'll save you busted levers, mirrors, fairings, and all that, which can cost a lot of money to replace. You can get yourself some crash guards to prevent some of the damage, but it's best if you keep your bike inside. Not only will you have to not worry about it getting blown over or anything like that, but you'll also avoid turning it into a giant rust bucket in the rain, or rats and mice climbing into your bike and chewing on electrical cables, or any other kind of nonsense that happens outside. If you've ever seen the underseat of a bike that lives outside, you know how hard it can be on your bike. Number six, bad shifting. Now, this one's really hard to get wrong, seeing as how motorcycles have sequential gearboxes, meaning you can't money shift, but it is possible to nuke your transmission if you shift like a dum-dum. If you're too ginger with the shifter, you don't have the clutch all the way in, you run the risk of grinding your gears, and when you're too soft with the shifter, you might not get the gear all the way in position and find that you're just riding the bike pops out of gear in weird places. If you get a false neutral like that, just pull in the clutch and slap it up a gear with the gears are spinning slower, you're less likely to hurt them that way. Or you could just shift like a normal person and avoid the whole situation. If your clutch isn't all the way in, you're putting undue wear and tear on the gear dogs since your gear and transmission aren't completely disconnected. This one's easy to avoid, just make sure your clutch cable has the right amount of free play. Too much or too little and your clutch doesn't work right. Number seven, mods. This one might sound like a cop out, but it is possible to do some real damage to your bike by doing some dumb mods or using crappy parts. Something like popping a fat turbs key you bought on Amazon for $50 on your Busa will probably leaving your beloved highway monster a chunky paperweight. Or more realistically, using universal parts like levers, slip-ons, or lights. Universal parts work on any bike in theory, but in practice, they don't work well on literally anything. You're going to get a lot more wiggle out of your levers, your slip-on will leak, and your lights can short out. If you're thinking about using universal bits and bobs on your motorcycle, I'd strongly urge you to look for something that's specific to your bike. There are some things you can use without worry, like bolt-on windscreens, tank grips, which every bike needs, by the way, and they usually can get them fitted for the tank, or heated grips, just maybe don't go with the cheapest option. These might not total your motorcycle, but they will cause literally every other biker out there to judge you, and that's almost worse. 
The other thing we recommend too is when you are installing mods, do so cleanly and simply. You can really gank up your motorcycle if you install something incorrectly and strip some bolts or damage other parts as well. Fact! Scotland has 421 words for snow. Some of them are sneezel, which means to start snowing, or flink and drinkin', which means a light snow. Goodbye. So, I hate to break it to you, but this video is actually over. But if you hit this one right over here, you can keep watching your sweet Papa Yam doing some fun stuff. And if for nothing else, do it for Yammy Chan. Don't worry, I'll wait. I'll just, I'll just wait, it's okay. Take your time.